All right, so check this out. What if you had the perfect roadmap to get that perfect lean chiseled physique? I'm talking about that Greek God physique that Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci would be looking and be like, who the fuck sculpted this nigga? Well then, maybe you should or shouldn't check out the Greek God program. Now I think about it, I've actually used the Greek God program for about a year now. Should probably give y'all a review over it. I I think this is what this video is about. Damn right it is, let's get to it. All right, so there's three topics that I'm gonna cover in this video. One of them being the philosophy behind the Greek God physique, right? Two, the training principles behind it. And three, the nutrition, right? So let's start off with the philosophy of the Greek God physique. If you haven't seen, I'm pretty sure if you watch this video, you watch other fitness YouTubers, therefore you've probably seen the Keno Body ads, they're fucking everywhere. But anyways, Keno Body is all about the minimalistic approach, right? The minimal but necessary effort to get you that, you know, that strong V-shaped torso and the, the sculpted arms that look like boulders and the, the prominent upper chest that, you know, makes your chest look like a plate of armor and the rock hard arms and the, the tout waist with the, you know, the veins running through it that ladies die for and the, the lean and fit looking legs, not the, not the, the centaur legs, nice and lean. Basically the plan is to put on muscle in all the right places that will make you look better in the quickest fashion. That way you can stay motivated and continue to work out. Okay, so now on to the training principles. So I, I don't have the direct quote of what he said, but he's always talking about, this is a Gregor Gallery, he's always talking about how muscle is a direct signal of strength. And like, you know, the more muscle you have, that's a direct correlation to how strong you are, right? This, so this is not necessarily true, because you know, you've seen powerlifters that are a buck 30, you know, and they been bench pressing like a million, right? But um, that's the whole principle behind it. So what they, what he, what he's trying to do is to get you to progress your strength on key compound lifts. And you know, compound lifts are, if you don't know, the, the lifts that involve multiple joint action at once, right? So if you're doing a bench press, obviously your shoulders are moving, and then your elbows moving as well, right? So that's a two joints that makes the compound. Here are the main compound lifts of the program, right? You got the incline barbell bench press which will really help build that upper chest look that you're going for, right? Then you got the standing barbell shoulder press to give you that, give your front delts that nice round, boulderous look, right? And then you got the weighted chin ups that will build the, the, the V-shaped torso that you're going for. The weighted dips, which is just an overall good, uh, good chest mass builder, right? It's, it's gonna hit the shoulders, it's gonna hit the triceps, and it's gonna hit the, the lower middle pec, right? So just a great, overall compound lift and then you got power cleans or sumo de deadlifts right so as you can see he left out squats which might be troublesome to some people but I mean you can just do them instead of power cleans or, or sumo deadlifts but we'll get into that later why squats are not in the program but um these lifts are gonna be the cornerstones of your weight lifting regimen okay so you're gonna work out three times a week using a two-day split so on the first day Monday, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Monday, let's say you're hitting tri uh, a push day, right? So tries, chest, shoulders. Then Wednesday, you're gonna hit back and buys and, and legs. And then Friday, you're gonna go back to the, the push day, right? So basically, each time you step in the gym, you're gonna do the workout that you didn't do last time. So you're just literally just flipping and flopping each time. And the, the idea behind this is that you're getting that extra volume in per week or like, as a as a, like a beginner, these are like the, this program is for like beginners essentially, right? So as a beginner, when you're building that muscle, let's say you work out on Monday and then like there's like I don't know I don't remember the exact time period, but there's a there's a there's a time period where you know you work out and then like you're you, you destroy your muscles, you know you break down the muscle and then your body goes through a, a synthesis period and then there's a you don't want to leave uh, some gains on the table, right? So like if you were just to hit uh, a muscle group once per week, there would be like a, a five day period where you could be getting gains in that period. Like you're, you're fully recovered, but like you're just, you're just not working them out. So the, the idea is kind of like a, to go towards like a, kind of like a full body workout scheme where you're just kind of a, it's not all the way there yet. It's kind of, it's like kind of halfway there, but like basically he wants you to hit the gym, hit a muscle group every four days. That way you can maximize or optimize the, the time period where you're actually 
ready to, to get back into working out. You're fully recovered. You hit like you hit a muscle group on Monday, and then by by Friday you're definitely good to go and hit that muscle group again instead of waiting till next Monday and like leaving two or three days on the table, right? Where you're just not working out. So, anyways, here's what the workouts will look like. Look, the workouts are going to be uh, really you're going to hit your compound lifts, the two compound lifts at the beginning of the workout, and the rest is just going to be isolation workouts. And in the compound lifts, you're going to use reverse pyramid training right so reverse pyramid training is when you know you do your warm-up three sets of warm-ups right whatever that be right and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start your first working set is gonna be your heavy set right so like that's gonna that's gonna be the heavy you're gonna do you're gonna do your heaviest weights that you can do and then the second set is gonna be 10 percent lighter and the third set will be 10 percent lighter than the second set so let's say i'm doing 200 for five on the first set so then my second set is gonna be 10 percent lighter so I'm gonna do 180 for six. And then my third set will be, what the hell is that? Uh, 162 for eight. I mean, you, you probably can't get 162 on the bar, but the point is that you're gonna decrease the load each time. And I guess this is, I don't know, like if this is the most optimal way to go about it. I've heard that it doesn't matter to go, to do reverse pyramid training or standard pyramid training where you just, uh, where you just build your way up. But, um, it, his all ideas, you know, you, you come in the gym fresh and you're ready to hit your heavy set and that's better for you. But yeah, you'll you do your compound list. So let's say it's a, a chest day. You'll hit your incline, uh, incline bench, a set of five, six, and eight and decrease the weight each time. And then you'll do your standing shoulder press and you do five, six, and eight and increase the weight each time. And then you'll go do some isolation stuff like, you know, like a tricep push down or some lateral raises stuff like that right so start off with the compound movements and then by the time your body's fatigued you know after the compound movements you move on to the isolation so you can just milk out the gains i guess you know like you're already tired so might as well just iso so really the main focus of the workouts are the compound lifts and with those you're just going to try to add a little bit of weight to the bar each time that you step into the gym so let's say you hit your set of five and the fifth the fifth rep of the set of five was uh, was easy, right? So that means next workout, you can come put on a, he, I mean, I had to, he recommends that you buy a, the, the little 1.25 plates. So you can put 1.25 on each side and have an extra, just put on 2.4, uh, 2.5 pounds on the, the bar. So it's like a an incremental difference that you can barely tell. But um, yeah, if that, if that last rep of your, your set was easy, then you're ready to, to step on and, you know, just make that constant regression on. But if that last rep of the, of the set was hard, you, you need to stay there for the next session and, and build your strength at that level. Also including the program are some specialization routines for those body parts that just seem to be lagging behind for whatever reason. And then also they have mega workouts, which are basically where you do all the compound lifts up front. And then when you're doing the isolation workouts, you're just, uh, you're really getting in a, a hell of volume. Like you're, like it'll have you doing like a, like a five sets of, of 10 of this, like a pec deck or like, you know, a tricep push down. So you can, you get this extra volume and it really maximizing, maximizes your storage of glycogen, which is what makes your muscles appear fuller. On to nutrition, this program is primarily used to build lean mass. So if you want to build lean mass, it's the most optimal state to be in is in a caloric surplus. That way you can have those extra carbs on your body, in your body, that way you can have the extra strength because carbs are your body's main source of energy, right? So caloric surplus is the move and it's really, it's not a heavy caloric surplus. It's like a, it's like a lean bulk, right? So you're really just not, you're gonna add like, to whatever your maintenance calories are, you're just gonna add like 300 calories to that. That way you can consistently gain weight but not go into this ultimate bear mode bulk season type shit like you just won't get absurdly fat the recommended macro split is 30 percent protein 30 percent fat and 40 percent carbs but i really don't stress over that i just try to get my 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight and it is what it is after that um he also like i mean you know if you've seen keno body it's all about that intermittent fasting you know coffee in the morning type things but it could be hard for you to get your caloric surplus in and fast in the morning I know I already naturally fast in the morning because it's hard to put food in my stomach and when I do that it's it's so hard to get my calories in so I wouldn't recommend fasting anyways because like what's the point you're gonna be in a surplus anyway you're not trying to lose weight but 
I mean, to each its own. Okay, so I didn't mention these when I was talking earlier, the three subheadings, but um, this is an extra subheading I wanna throw in there. It's about measuring your progress, right? So one thing you're gonna track each time you go to the gym are your lifts. Everything that you, all the reps that you hit, everything that you lift, you're gonna track it. That way, next time you go in the gym, you have, you know exactly what you hit and you can improve off of that, right? Then you're also gonna get some measurements, right? So you're gonna measure your chest, you're gonna measure your, your waist, measure your arms, measure your weight, of course. That way you can just see the progress happening from week to week so you can stay motivated, right? And then it says like, you know, I mean, obviously you have these measurements, but I feel like photos are more aesthetic and just tell a better picture than some measurements, right? It's, it, it feels better to see like progress in a mirror than to, to see it as a measurement, right? So it recommends just taking some, you know, some front double bicep poses from the back as well and just really, really have some metrics, something to, to go off of as you go forward in your fitness journey, right? And then as it, as it goes for um, strain standards, right? This is another aspect of measuring your progress. They have three strength standards, right? They got good, great, and godlike. So what they do is, you know, it, they compare it to your body weight. So for example, if you can incline bench 1.4 times your body weight for five reps, you are at the godlike status, right? And they do all these uh, strength standards all through your body weight, like for the dips, for the bench press, for the chin ups, for the barbell press, for barbell curls, all these, all these strength standards really just give you something to strive for, right? But the ones in the program for me, they're kind of uh, they're kind of far fetched. This guy named Radu Antonio, he created some strength standards that I feel like are more feasible. Like one, one of them, he gives you like a, a whole bunch of strength standards to achieve the warrior physique, and then one of them's for the Greek god physique, and then one of them's for the superhero physique. So all of these are just good metrics, so you can know how you're doing, how you're performing and know where you need to end up at. All right, so to wrap this up, I'm gonna go ahead and make a pro and con list of the program, right? So let's start off with pros, right? So in terms of um, the, the program, it's minimalistic, but believe me, it's minimalistic, but it works. Like you can work out three times a week and it, and it works and it's great. I mean, this, is, this would be ideal for beginners, people that maybe are intimidated to step in a gym and don't know what to do. It, it's not it's not an overload of information and it just teaches you the fundamentals of working out another pro I would say is the the, the physique standards the Greek uh, the stand uh, the strength standards right it's it's always good that's how humans work humans are meant to to see a, a aim or to aim at a target and then go after it, right so these whole physique goals and strength standards are great motivation to chase after and then Third pro I would say is the whole minimalism thing is great because it's not too restrictive and it's not authoritarian. It molds around your lifestyle. I mean, there's really no excuse as to why you can't get in the gym three days a week and and bust out your workouts, right? It it's not like you you can in terms of nutrition and everything, you can basically eat what you want to as long as it fits your macros, right? And it's perfect for just people that want to learn the basics of nutrition and working out. All right, so for cons, one of the pros is one of the cons because if you're not, if you're not a, a beginner lifter, right, maybe three times a week is not enough, not enough volume for you, right? So for people that are are intermediate, I don't think th this program would be for you, especially since they neglect squats, right? So that moves me on to another con, right, which is how the program doesn't really put an emphasis on squats. Squats are like typically known universally to be the best leg workout, right? And in the program, it, it recommends doing pistol squats, which are just a basically a body weight exercise where you, you do a squat off of one leg. And for me, I mean, the way I'm built, like I don't even have the mobility to do pistol squats. And some people, I mean, maybe I have the strength, I don't know, but, um, I don't think pistol squats are just a recommendation that you should make for for everybody. I think back squats are the way to go. Cause his whole thing about like uh, the whole the reason he's against back squats and everything is because he doesn't want you want to build that proportional physique, right? So when your legs, if you're doing back squats and you know you're building up on the waist and everything, your legs are gonna get very big. But 
I mean, this program is for beginners for the most part, right? So these type of people that are doing the program are not going to have humongous legs already. I mean, Greg, yeah, he if he kept doing back squats, he's going to get humongous legs. But I don't think he should be making that recommendation for the type of people that are buying the program. So all in all, I mean, pros and cons and everything, I think the program is very very good it teaches the fundamentals of nutrition and working out and it is for me it, this is the, just the beginning for me i i mean i did the program for a year and now i've kind of modified it to where i'm able to work out four days a week i just like rotate between doing back and buys push day and then legs by themselves so I, i've kind of just made an extra day for legs but all in all the program is very very good it delivers on its promises I, throughout my year, I was able to basically maximize my new gains. I think I have some to go, but definitely receive some gains. And just one, in one bulk and one cut, I'll, I'll show y'all. I'll probably throw it up there right now if I can find some good before and after pictures. But I definitely, with three times a week, I was able to put on a substantial amount of muscle. So tell me how y'all feel about the program, if you're going to buy it or anything. And um, if you're looking for a cutting program, there's the AFL. I have a video, a review on that. But just tell me what y'all think about the program. If you're gonna buy it, if you have any questions, like I said in my other video, I'm not a spokesperson for Keto Body, but I think I'm fairly experienced enough to speak on it. So let me know in the comment section below. And I hope y'all like this video. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks.